video. Bro. Hi everybody, Russ and my Hammers 11. Hope you're all safe and well. If you channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you're made aware that there's new content coming on. As always, let's thank our channel sponsors. Untuck it. Check them out in the description below. It's, uh, oh, actually, this will go out on Wednesday, but it's Shrove Tuesday today. So uh, I've heard uh, Gates is a bit of a tosser, um, but I think that was different, actually. I don't think it's about the pan Did have a pancake in them, but anyway. Um, today's guest, we have, we have Gatesy. How are we doing, my man? I'm very well, mate. How's yourself? I am all right. You a pancake man? Um, actually, the missus did knock a couple of pancakes up a little earlier. So mm. yeah, 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 they're all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not not sort of like totally bothered about it, but she puts it in front of me. So what are you gonna do? She she yeah she provides. So why not? I know. Yeah, I don't know. What did you have on it? Um, just a bit of jam. Just a bit of strawberry. Bit jam. Of jam? Yeah. Little bit, little bit of jam, little bit of strawberry jam. The kids, okay. the kids went a little bit sort of, you know, they went chocolate spread. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, 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 Nutella, uh, or whatever. Fair enough, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. No, I'm not a pancake fan, not a pancake fan. I, I, I used to, um, when, when I used to work in Ealing, there was a place called My Old Dutch or Ye Old Dutch, and they would have be savory pancakes, which almost like a, almost like a pizza. Okay, there we go. It's Pancake Watch on My Hammers mm. 11. Hope we'll stay from. Um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, uh, Gatesy, um, he, he regular contributor now to you know, Hammers Chat and things like that. And him and Duke, who've had on the channel, have started their own little, uh, not little, but they're starting their own channel, uh, their own YouTube channel, Waffling on the Back West Ham. Uh, how's that How's that all going, my man? Um, early days. I mean, we, we did our first episode, not Sunday, just gone the Sunday before. Um, just and, and it's basically just me and Duke sort of just sitting there and chatting about you know the game that went previous to it, which was the Fulham game, yeah. and then the game that was coming up, which was the Manchester United game. So we were sort of just having a little chit chat, you know, just two forty-something-year-old blokes having a little chip, little chin wag about all things claret and blue. So you know, and yeah, we're just seeing where it goes. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, it's just a bit Keep of a laugh. Keeps keeps you busy. Keeps you busy yeah. at the moment, isn't it? And there's nothing yeah. to do. Although you're busy yeah. working, you're 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 out every day working, aren't you? So uh, yeah. those you also don't know, Gatesy has like most people. We had like a sandwich and like a packet of crisps, and not Gatesy. His 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 lunch is a legendary now in on on the uh, on the live streams every every Monday to Friday, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's only a small lunch box. Though, I know, right? I know, but it's, it's it's the cacophony of flavors and and textures. You know, what I mean, most people will have a sandwich. You know, just a sandwich, ham, and I mean, I mean, recently ham and cheese. Really, but I appreciate that's what we'll be having. But that's it. That tends to be it. Maybe a crescent of crisps on the side. But there's always a, a homemade element. There's always a brownie or a sausage roll. There's obviously we've got the we have the banana apple bottle of water Satsuma, yeah. um, boilerplate ending of of your lunch. But it's you know, as I said to Duke, it's a bit like um, it's like a it's like a buffet lunch. You know, it's like oh, I'll have a bit of that, a bit of that, a bit of that. Fair play yeah. to you. Fair play to you. Look, um, if, it, if if that's what's given in the box, then now should eat it. Fair play to you, man. Listen, me, me, me wife's a chef. What can I say? It's why well, a lot of stuff that I say is homemade. You, it's like there you go. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? On. That makes sense. That's and that's why I like doing these epic these things because they they give you a, another flavour. You know, I just thought, oh, you know, she's she's you know you. Mrs. Gates is in the in the kitchen slaving away every day with her sausage rolls and her, her homemade brownies. But if she's a chef, then fair enough because she's just keeping up, you know, doing yeah. her job really. So it's it's different. It's yeah. different. Uh, I'm not how, too how... sure if she's fattening me up for something. I don't know. Yeah, how, exactly. You know, yeah, you know, she keeps asking jumping... me. You know, is your, is your life insurance paid up? I'm yeah, like, do you yeah, know? I like it. That, I've it's had fine. that recently. <laughs> I have had that recently. Um, yeah, then then she'll yeah, you'll go home one day in the hot tub. You know, she had a bottle of hot tub, really, and it's full of really, and a couple of onions as well. He's like peppercorns. What's going on here? Yeah, just just sitting here for twenty minutes. Yeah. Uh, that's all we need to do, Rob. How are you? How are you finding lockdown with everything, with the kids and everything, and the wife and every, and work and stuff in general? Um, well, I mean, on a on a personal level, like I say, me, I've been working all the way through yeah. it. So, um, obviously, at work. Um, there's been certain safety measures that have been brought in by the company I work for. Of course. Um, so, you know, we're just following all of that, really. I mean, the kids, 
I think they've, they've had enough of it now. I mean, was it been sort of on and off? It's 11 months. It's rolling on towards a year. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. we've just had enough of it now. And I, I, I appreciate that, you know, the, the powers that be need to do something to stem the sort of like the infection rate and all the rest of it. But I just sort of sit there and I think, is it really necessary to close the pubs? Because as you know, Duke is a manager of a yeah, local pub exactly. to me. And he turned around and said that, you know, they um it was apparently a meeting i believe and i don't think i'm saying anything i shouldn't yeah so edit it out if there is but there you go um but apparently the um the head honchos of weatherspoons green king and, and the various other breweries um basically turned around to boris and said that basically from the time that the first lockdown finished to when they shut it down there was only a proven transmission rate in in that setting of about three percent and yet they mm. were just getting shut so yeah like i say i know they've got to do something i get that but i i sort of think is it a sledgehammer a cracker walnut listen we're talking politics that's not why we're here so no but we do but i mean it's yeah but it's 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 part of like it's part of the we you know probably it's it's, it's the most it's it's a time where politics make ha, make such a an impact on our lives yeah, at the, i know it, i know it always does but the, even more this is like the most ever you know yeah. in terms of how they can just you know how you know one uh, one sort of party one government has said right okay that's it you know you've got to stay in your house what yeah. okay don't come out you know, yeah yeah don't come out oh, you, you can go for a walk unless, you can't come out yeah unless you, unless you fix washing machines for a living well there you go yeah. well, people, people need washing machines or fridges Rob, yeah. or fridges <laughs> Mm. Any 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 household appliance and and, and Gates is your yeah. man. Um, but then yeah, they're, they're, they're even more so because they're being used more, aren't they? So that's the thing. It's like you know you got to think. Everybody's um, at home. Everyone's at home. Everyone's yeah. using the washing machine more and their tumble dryers and their dishwashers. And yeah, God, we've had a new tumble dryer for some reason. I have no idea why, but <laughs> just turns up. Um, yeah, no, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? Where you, you, all those things are used more, you know. But then the car isn't, you know. It's like I got, in the, I get, I, the only time I get in the car is to go to West Ham, um, and the other car just sort of stays there. Really, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit weird. It's like when we had all the snow here, and it was like three days later, it was still the snow for the car. The main car was still there because it hadn't been moved, and yeah. so it was like literally like a block of ice, like a huge icicle off the bottom of it, and. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's going to be. It's going to take months to readjust yeah. to having some sort of normality, isn't it? We all know it's going to be the case, and but as it, you said, it will be a new normal, won't it? I don't. I don't think it will be normal no. as in it was before. I think it will be a modified version of it. But... Yeah, I think it's going to be like it's something you're going to have to. We have to live with. You know what I mean? So yeah. it'll be like the flu. Yeah, the flu you know, yes. I mean, you know, I mean, the flu has. You know, we. You know, people get the flu every year you know people get flu jabs every year yeah. um and it kills lots of people every year as well you know it doesn't <laughs> and, and you know we don't stay in our houses about it so i think once everything sort of there's been this once the infection rate's going down and once the vaccination rate goes up um then i think there'll be some normality or, or some sort of yeah back to normal. anyway love politics but thankfully, just just to, just to end that point. Thankfully, West Ham aren't doing shit because I don't think I could live with this this well, sort of sitting indoors all the time and West Ham being crap. Well, that was what we was actually chatting about because before I come on here, I did the um, did a, a, a live stream. Am I allowed to plug it, Russ? Of course you can. Okay, it's uh, called Forged from Iron. Um, so if anyone is watching this and they want to have a little look. Please feel free. Feel free. Um, so, um, yeah, when we, we, we was talking about sort of, we, we were fourth, all right, for only for two hours, and yeah. now we're fifth. But even that, it's like, that's incredible. And it's like, normally we're fourth, fifth from bottom at this stage. This just feels weird. And I'm like, yeah. I'm just enjoying it while it lasts because I've just got this horrible feeling that I'm actually having some sort of dream and it'll be like dallas where i'll wake up and it'll be like no i dreamt it we got relegated at, you know, uh, shot. yeah <laughs> you know. i know i know it's 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 a different mindset isn't it I, it's a mindset i'm not used to um i hopefully i'll get i love to get used to it but like when you're looking at like the other day when like liverpool were playing city and liverpool lost and i think oh it's a great result for us Mental, in it? What? Absolutely crazy. I'm not bothered about yeah. Burnley versus Southampton. Yeah, nuts. You know, and 
you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things because sort of like now, I mean, if you just said to me at the beginning of the season, 24 games in, you'll be yeah. fifth and for a two hour spell fourth, but Chelsea, you know, knocked us off, but it's only goal difference. Um, yeah. If you just said that to me after we lost the Arsenal game, two games gone, we've sold Grady, we had the preseason game that we basically stunk the joint out. And you yeah. just said to me, don't worry, because 22 league games from now, you'll be in fifth place. You'll only be off fourth by goal, goal difference, and you'll have mm. 42 points. I looked at you and gone, oh, yeah. smoking. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? But it's here bizarre. we are. It's, and so, it is. So, someone put a good stat up the other day, um, and it's true. So I didn't believe, because someone quit said, no, it's not true. But it's, every time we've lost a game, we've won the game after hmm. this season. You know what I mean? We haven't gone on, like, usually West Ham will have a few we will we'll lose yeah. in a row and but Other every than the, game, first, the first two games of the season of course well, no because obviously we played we played a cup game in the middle oh we did didn't we? Yeah. that's why because i thought ah. oh yeah, that's it thanks i look all right bloody idiot and then someone went actually we played we played uh was the league Charles. cup wasn't it yeah the carabao cup um yeah, we played them in yeah. the middle so actually that counts oh fair play Completely all right okay passed me by that, i know I we say. forgot that was a, that was a great and 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 i think with and that shows a resilience that shows a resilience mm. which i haven't seen in the west ham team for many years um where you know when the chips are down um we we keep plugging away and then you know there's a goal in us and we're resilient and we don't seem to let a load of goals in recent you know which is again is something which doesn't usually happen with us we used to get drummed a few times a season yeah. Hasn't you haven't really had that happened. yet in touch wood as long as it's not on Sunday. I don't give a shit otherwise. Um, no, nah. nah. listen, I couldn't have that, Russ. I'm married to a Spurs fan. Oh, yeah, no, you're yeah, yeah. Don't, don't tell anyone. I, you know, you, again, you can edit this bit out. Yeah, don't worry. No one watches this anyway, yeah, Casey. It's no, all right. It's don't fine. worry. Fine, but, so, no yeah. one's a, okay. So, that, right, will be, that will be hell on earth if they actually. Well, turn us yeah. Over. Yeah, but that was fun. The, the reverse picture, I've got to say, because funnily yeah. enough, we, we, we was in Duke's pub when we was watching that. And of course, brilliant. Watching it, one nil, and I'm like, oh, two nil, oh, God. yeah, three nil. I'm having, I'm having me Sunday roast in the in the local boozer. Do you know what I mean? And me missus is sitting there, absolutely loving it. Three nil, yeah, oh, it's brilliant. Gets to the eighty second minute, and I'm like, yeah, it's gone. It's not. Oh, hang on, I'll, I'll score a goal. Oh, a bit of respectability at least. Oh, yeah. Three two. Oh, hang. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah. And then of course Lanzini puts it top top bins, and it was like, wow. And Duke was there, and we were just like, mate. That and is, that's and that's that a funny a thing. With, with, that's a funny thing with you and Duke as well, because like you know, you, you sort of knew each other, but and, and yeah, through because I was talking to Duke, he's like he was like oh, and I, and I knew him because of his because like my his son works in the pub, and but yeah. then and on the and then on, we was like on the you know the chat on the West Ham site, and we sort of bumped like you know reconnected so to speak yeah. you know, in a weird yeah. way. Brilliant, isn't it? What a lovely story. That's, yeah. I like that. I thought that was there really cool. Go. That was really cool. No, but you're right. I mean, there's a resilience and there's there's a never say die attitude, and uh, and that's what we need. And I think that's and I think that's being instilled by Moisey and the backroom staff and one hundred percent the people he's bringing in. And yeah, it's just I, exciting. I thought he was real unlucky the first time he had the gig. I agree. I thought he was really, really unlucky because what he got us from, you know, a relegation spot and. 13th from where we was was yeah i think a magnificent achievement considering that the players were in the main substandard um to, to do what he did was brilliant and then oh thanks for that dave but we we're gonna go in this direction and i have to be honest when we got pellegrini and i was one of the ones that went we've got a premier league me too manager. yeah yeah this yeah, guy's yeah, been everyone manager was, yeah. of real madrid for god's sake yeah, yeah. and he's now west Ham manager brilliant and what was it? First four games, he lost them all. Yeah. I thought, yeah, that's great. Typical West Ham. But obviously, you know, first season, what was it? Tenth. Great. Like, yeah, yeah. You're thinking we can build on this and Roberto saying no more. Well, I mean, it was, we were flying high that season, last season, starting off with, where we were doing quite well. And then it, then it all just went to absolute shit, um, as happens with West Ham. But I, I know what you mean. It's one of those things where... I think everyone felt the same, you know. Oh, this is it. This is the next level. This is what we want to do, you know. We and and yeah, but I I, I felt sorry for Moyes. I think you know he's come mm. in twice, and he's come in to play, you know, to basically manage a team which isn't his own. Um, you know, with players who who were bought from the previous manager, and having spoken to a lot of ex players, you know, players bringing their own man, managers bringing their own players, and there's always a you know, yeah. um, and he's just 
but you know i mean there's things i like about moisey and i don't think you know things that i don't think the camera picks up you know that he is one of the only managers i see who watches the uh warm-up do you know what i mean so he'll sit there he'll stand there and watch the warm-up um the only one other one i've seen i've seen all the time when he comes is jürgen klopp so jürgen klopp will sit there he will stand there on the center circle facing west ham watching west ham train and yeah. moisey will do the same you know he'll sit there watching so he watched sheffield united train sometimes you know chris wilder might come out for five minutes but he literally watches them and i was like well that's absolutely perfect because you want to see who's got carrying injury you know it's really clever um and also what he does is as well the last i've noticed the last of half dozen games um at the stadium um they all go for a walk around the pitch about an hour about two about an hour and a half an hour and a half about the air in their track suits their masks on they go for a nice walk around the pitch together Lovely. lovely all masked up He's two meters apart, of course. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no that'd be two meters because they're all, they're all, they're all COVID. They're, they've all done their tests. They're all right, but it's uh, all in their masks, sitting there chatting, and stuff like, yeah, stuff like that. You know, it's all team spirit. It's um, it's something which we haven't had for a long time, and so he, he um, really seems to have galvanised the truth. Yes, he's, you know, he, he, and they, you can see, they will literally run through brick walls for him. Yeah, you know, um, definitely, it's it's brilliant, and like I say, you know, I'm enjoying it while it lasts because I'm I'm I've been a West Ham fan. Well, I was a West Ham fan before I was conceived. My dad didn't give me a choice. It was like any <laughs> kids of mine are West Ham fans, and that's yeah. all there is to it. Um, so I didn't have a choice. And, you know, I'm I'm used to sort of seeing us struggling. I've seen us get relegated. Yep. Um, I was four years old when we won the FA Cup. Mm. Um, I've got no real memory of it. No, of course you don't. And, you know, for us to have some sort of, relative success fantastic absolutely yeah. fantastic the only thing the only thing that i'm disappointed about is that we didn't have more of a go at united in the cup because for me i mean there was a load of people on social media as i'm sure you're aware that mm. were sort of saying it you know and they're not mutually exclusive and you never know how life turns out but you know if you could finish top four top six mm or win the FA Cup and drop down a you know to eighth, tenth, whatever, what would you take? And I'm like trophy all day long twice. Yeah, I think everyone Sunday. would take a trophy. Yeah. I think West Ham we are, you know, it, it, you know, we're we you know, I think it, it comes to a point when you're in the halfway, you know, we're not two thirds, but almost two thirds of the season and you're and you're there. You're not there by luck. You're there by merit. You know, after after half after a third of the season, you could have had a lucky run of games. Yep. could have had done and we've had a shit run of games at the first bit but um but we are in essence a trophy club and the yeah, ironic thing he hasn't run a trophy for 40 years but that's what we do we're a trophy club you know we can i think we can beat anyone at their day you know in a one-off game we can beat anyone in the yeah. in this league um it's just the consistency side which has always let us down so we can do it like half a dozen games to get to the final you know three times this in our club's history but you know that the next stage would be to to do it on a prolonged period and for me now it's and it sounds really wanky but when i say it out loud but i don't care where we finish this season now i i finish i want to know where we finish next season that's what i'm bothered about now because mm. we've got yeah. 42 you know we're we're, we're safe we're going to be top 10 bar an absolute fucking you know disgrace you know yeah. but that's that's progress for us but it's next season because we have a really good season we had three shit seasons you know the last good season was the boating season probably the last season before that maybe looking in uh, even the 2000s i'd say maybe even the 99 probably, probably the first season under rhoda wasn't it because if you remember right yeah. rhoda came in we finished sevenths yeah and then the following season we got relegated yeah and then it went up and down we was just up and down maybe yeah i mean yeah. maybe maybe the, the fa cup final season um oh, yeah we did all right that don't. season oh, i know it's yeah. funny i, I like when know, i talk to my ex-players about that it's hilarious they sort of yeah uh, do you know what i've i've seen the club relegated well in my lifetime i think we've been relegated four times but the first time i was a nipper i got yeah. sort of you know memories of three relegations three four you lose count after a while yeah you do yeah. um yeah whatever um but that day i gotta say in cardiff i was there i was in i was in the stand behind pepe reina's goal yeah with my best mate we are three two up against the european champions which they were then yep and i always remember it look 
because the, the touch line is sort of like down to my right. I saw the guy come out of the board. I think he put four minutes up, I think. I can't remember. Yeah. And I always remember, as he did it, and it's, this is, so uh, this is probably all I'm now going to tell people, and anyone watching is going to say, it's your fault, Gatesy. You put the mockers on it. I turned to my best mate, and I went, we're going to win the fucking FA Cup. And as yeah. I turned around, the ball's dropping out of the air. Yeah. And it just arrowed past Shaka. Someone else is like, oh, my God. Else. Who else? Someone else has told me that story. It was it was absolutely heartbreaking. I've ne- you know, to this day, and what's that? That's now 15 years ago. Yeah. In a, in a football sense, not in a life sense, because, you know. Um, but that broke my heart yeah absolutely and i've never recovered and the only way i believe i will have any sort of recovery would be to see us get to an fa cup final and win it yeah and then i'll be happy Definitely. and even if do you know what? i'd even take the league cup i'd yeah. even take well, I mean, you know, just a piece won the league major cup, silverware so... at, at yeah. wembley watch the captain whether it's mark noble declan rice or a n other have some of that yeah I'd die a happy man. I'm trying to think. I'm racking my brains. I think it might have been Baz. It may have been a ba- It may have been even Baz, and he had a a cardboard FA Cup, like you know the foil one, and yeah. and he posed just as you know behind the just as Gerard oh, scored. It's no. something like it might not have been Baz. It might have been someone else. It was someone who everyone knows. It's the same story. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go through and listen to it. But yeah, I know what you mean. It was a horrible day. Um I, I was I was sat there and I had uh I remember seeing the ball come across and, and Marlon swing with his one foot. He was yeah and, he was he yeah and that, that's he... the goal I was there. I was right above that and I was like oh it was excruciating. But anyway well let's let, let's let's think of, of happier times as I said we'll have mm-hmm. um although you did suffer through four relegations and stuff as well but um <laughs> Well, usually I ask why people are a West Ham fan, but you've already done it, so that's really sort of ticked it. Well, so, yeah, as you said, yeah, I mean, my, my dad was was the West Ham fan. I mean, geographically, if we'd have supported the team that geographically was the closest to where I had my sort of like formative years, yeah, um, I'd have either been a Chelsea or a Millwall fan. So yeah. I'm, I'm from a place called Kennington, which uh, yeah. people that follow cricket. Yeah, the oval, yeah. That is the oval. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and also the place I believe where the first FA Cup final was held. Kent will be on later, and he'll Kent Kent will ver- say verify yeah. that. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I'd have e- I should have either been a Millwall or a Chelsea fan, geographically speaking. But the story is, and I did what asked my dad once: Why did you support West Ham, given where you was? And and his dad, my granddad, was an Arsenal fan. Yeah. And he turned around and said, "Well." My, my dad never, ever put any pressure on me, um, unlike what he did with me, but that's another story. <laughs> yeah. um, and he said, you know, it was around about 1964 and Preston played West Ham in the FA Cup. Yeah. And my dad was like, well, you know, who do I support? And my granddad was saying to him, you got to support the London team, boy. And of course they won. That was it. And... Now we're on my kids. They're all West Ham nuts. And I've told them, don't you ever, ever have any grandkids coming back, supporting Chelsea, Millwall, Tottenham. None of that. Manchester United. Don't do it because I'll disown you. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I think it's, it is like, it's funny how many people I've interviewed. And we, we've already touched about FA Cup finals, but how many FA Cup finals have influenced the people i've interviewed you know it's 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 hilarious how many people um you know we've had oh god the, you know like even people like paul mcginley and people like that you know he 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 sports west ham because he saw the 1975 fa cup final it was a you know the village one person in the village had a uh color tv it was the first color tv match he'd ever seen and fulham in black and white and he's like, well, I've seen black and white, but actually these other guys look all right. Well, I mean, Claret and Blue. Yeah, Claret and Blue. Um, or it was it loads about the 1981 and, you know, and, but it's, it's one of those, it's, and, and you're, and you're obviously, you sort of experienced it already now because you said you had a stream, you had that today and you had Pete John from Canada and you had Jake from sort of Somerset, Bristol area. Yeah, yeah, all, all these, and it's, it's James it's from Doncaster as well. He James from Doncaster slashing yeah. Yeah, Canada. Um, and it's one of those things where, 
you know, it's it's it, it always it, it doesn't now, but it always surprised me how this funny little club in East London has this little crazily obsessive global fan base, mad. and and it is it is mad, isn't it? It is mad. Yeah. I mean, you know, you sit, you, you join, the, you know, come on the streams, my 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 lunchtime ones. You know, we have people from god we have obviously all the american guys we have um darren from thailand we have yeah, all the Luke, australian Lucas games the netherlands didn't you Nick, lucas, lucas yeah, yeah lucas yeah, netherlands we have oh it's nuts. mental absolutely mental man they're, and they're all so crazy yeah. considering we ain't one fuck could you imagine if we actually won something do you know what i mean you know we, and this is this is why i think and this is my opinion and yeah you know i can't prove it one way or the other but when you consider that the lack of success that we've had you know, pound yeah. for pound for me, we got the best supporters in the world. Yeah, simple as no, that. I agree. But the other side of that coin is sometimes, you know, it's it goes a little bit too far. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. you can get some people who are a little bit too, you know, just cross the line. Do you know what I mean? I know uh, what you mean. But you I know, know you mean. can't have one without the other. It's as simple. No, as that. you and can't. Like, for me, pound for pound, like I say. Manchester United fans, it's easy for them to, you know, say that they're the best supporters in the world. Well, yeah, you, you, you've you had a history of winning yeah. Premier Leagues and European Cups and all the rest of it. What have we won? Oh, well, we won the Championship Playoff Final. We won the Intertoto Cup. And the, and the Betway Cup. And the Betway Cup. I, do you know what? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take you forget, that. You forget about that. It's, it's coming yeah. to the point now where we're going to have to start getting that around the outside of the board. On the so, honest board. Yeah. yeah. Although we, we don't, we're the only people who invent their own cup and have only won it like twice or whatever. So. <laughs> but we get to the final every year. People forget about that. We get to the there final every year, that Betway Cup. It's like the England cricket team. They always get to the final of the Ashes, don't they? It's funny, that. They do. And the World Series is always held by two American based basketball teams. Now, I'm, all, all the, all the countries in the world. It's funny you say that. Yeah. Some, I think it was my son asked me the question. I think it was yesterday. He said, "Why is it called the World Series?" Yeah. And I, I, I've, I've been given one version. Yeah, Duke, Duke will probably I I say is Duke, right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. But what I got told, rightly or wrongly, was that the World Series was called that because it used to apparently be sponsored by a newspaper called the New York World. It's, it doesn't exist anymore. It went into liquidation god knows how long ago but apparently yeah. apparently yeah. that's the reason behind it now there could be someone out there that's no, going it's true i think no, it's true it's man wrong but you know that's what i got told i'm not a no, bar, i think a, it's a true basketball, baseball expert as i say no, I, Duke would right. know, but... I think you're right my man uh the games primary is but every season the two these men approach me yeah i think you're right man i think it, it looks it looks i mean every sort of my my extensive googling um in it sort of does does it makes sense though it makes sense um but yeah interesting there we go we it's, we don't just we, it's not just west ham here we we, we learn as you know it is you know we had Duke really telling us about um about the, the baseball freeze one as well yeah. so yeah and or, it, or it's a uh, culinary tips you know it's it, or politics we'll talk about anything, football politics politics baseball, food I mean, listen, what, food what, what, what else do you want to discuss what, what more do you want to warming? discuss no no you're right. <laughs> although it's a bit although, although although my daughter did comment today she was like daddy you know how it was like snowing yes last week and like yeah. really cold but you had like the fire on yeah well it's like 10 degrees today daddy what what why is that i was like well so it's, it's all that so all that uh you know all those see do you remember do you remember it used to always be about cfc gas wasn't it cfc gas everyone used to talk yeah. about I have enough, use what what that? Has, has that gone out has that gone out of fashion now because no one talks about that gas anymore now i don't know no, cfc they, gas they phased all that out because obviously i'm obviously working in refrigeration yeah of course the old old fridges going back yeah. to sort of the 80s and, and sort of like earlier they all had cfc's and there were certain ways that they had to be disposed of oh i'm going we're talking about fridges yeah now. jesus yeah for <laughs> And like, just get on with be, the team gates. He used to be, yeah, tell us about your 11 for God's sake. Tell us about Shaka Hislop. Fast God. forward, fast forward. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. We have to time stamp it. Um, but yeah, it was the aerosol cans as well. They, they were yeah. CFDs as well, yeah. weren't they? Oh, that was that was an easier time, weren't it? And that was an easier yeah. time, I think. There was yeah. no there was no coronavirus. We just all we had to worry about was making sure your fridge was shut. 
and dispose of properly and your aerosol can um had the right thing on it anyway back then it was it was making sure you're home in time for dinner that's home, home to worry about then. yeah yeah three and six and a bus ride home change of a tenner yeah I'm not that old jesus <laughs> <laughs> thrappence apney i don't even know what thrappence apney is right anyway let's let's start let's start actually let's, 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 do, let's do stuff oh, right let's let's talk about the 11 um let's talk about 11 right um obviously everyone we've had on the channel bar a couple of people um hiring happy and bishop much very um have given their 11 they've given their 11 so they, the idea is you can pick whoever you, whatever based on whatever criteria you want the only rule is you must have been alive to see them play that's the only rule otherwise we'd have all just picked bobby moore and um i mean i never saw but obviously i never saw trevor brookin play i never saw billy bonds play i saw them both manage but didn't see them play um so that's sort of basic criteria so right i've got my pad I've got my pen so um Let's start off in goal for the Gates E11. Who are we between the sticks? Now, I did see Phil Parks play. Um, my first game, interestingly enough, um, and I found out this was actually Gonzo's first game as well. It was the 10 0 win against Berry in the League Cup. Yep, nice. And we uh, did such a West Ham thing subsequently. We went and bought one of their players. Yeah, Paul, Paul Hilton. Hilton. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so back back to the topic. So I did see Phil Parks play, but I don't really remember it that well. Yeah. Um, when I sort of my sort of best recollection of Phil Parks, he was towards the end of his career, and probably still a great goalkeeper. But I didn't see him in his prime. Yeah, um, we've had some really good goalkeepers when you look yeah. at it, though. I mean, you know, Fabianski, I think. Maybe uh, he had a good game yesterday, but I don't think he's quite been right since he had the injury last season. But for the first yeah. season, I thought he was phenomenal. Um, we've had Rob Green, we've had David James, we've had some real quality keepers, Shaka. Mm. Um, but growing up, I I played in goal. But I was never ever going to be a pro. I'm five foot nine and short sighted, so not really much call for you know a goalkeeper of that stature. But yeah. Uh, the goalkeeper that I went for, um, he comes from near Moscow, apparently, and his name is Ludo Miklosko. Indeed, indeed, Ludo, Ludo, and and I, I, I'm I'm a similar ilk with you. I mean, I didn't I picked Fabianski, um, but uh, he was like my first goalkeeper, and he just seemed to be in goal for literally forever. Mm. He was always mm. in goal for us. Um, 374 and games as i as i my research I believe. revealed and, 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 and a, of the year in 91 indeed and something ridiculous like a, i think he had about 100 and something clean sheets mm. as well so um we did an a, 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 a appreciation nights for him a while back and yeah top bloke and just a lovely guy as well you know and he's I mean, he always he comes just, across really well doesn't yeah he? always yeah comes, and i and i remember sort of like when not just his playing days but when he came back as a goalkeeping coach because yeah. i was there in um 05 the playoff final win against preston yeah um and obviously jimmy walker did his knee in didn't he coming for that ball and mm -hmm. just bust his knee up and then he comes out afterwards when when the final whistle had gone and he's on ludo's back with the sort of like he's got his crutches and his knees all bandaged up and it's it's yeah you know and, and ludo was just sort of carrying him around sort of thing and uh yeah i mean he, he was you know everybody knows that when he turned up he could barely speak any english i think i saw the story you said about sort of um when he was at the swallow and yeah um, the fancy dress and yeah, i was just yeah. like oh my god but you know you stop and think about it i mean he he was probably one of the first eastern europe because obviously the fall of the berlin wall there wasn't really many in the way of no eastern of course yeah, yeah 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 so he probably would have been one of the first and yeah, it would have been it must have been a hell of a culture shock for him but you know for me i thought he was brilliant you know yeah. absolutely top top draw goalkeeper and yeah. uh i still remember that game in 95 as i'm sure um all west ham and manchester united fans do where ludo won the title for blackburn basically yeah it is it's, it's did like... tony gale a favor he did, he, yeah. He's in, I mean, he's in Blackburn team, wasn't he? He was. I think there was. Um, I think with Ludo, you're right. I think he was just like this. There was something so exotic about him, so mm. to speak, being from 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 Czechoslovakia at the time, and and he was like, 
he was such so different as you said from parks he was just like a wall just a unit mm. i mean he was i mean mccloskey was very much like the modern day goalkeeper you know athletic build mm. you know a big guy but not sort of but more sort of athletic rather than just big um and yeah and he just he just you know sometimes players and, and fans just work and mm. you're right he, he didn't speak any english yeah he said morley was, was saying about him going to swallow and and you know and dressing up as a school no not a sailor, a sailor wasn't it? a sailor for the, the thing and yeah brilliant absolutely I mean, brilliant. he's about uh, six foot five isn't he you know, i can like, just imagine really? his small little sailor's outfit like a pair of shorts. brilliant but uh yeah top man but no he's just a top guy ludo top yeah. guy right Fantastic. we'll put we'll put ludo in right let's go um with uh defense who's your first defender Okay, I'm going four at the back. Yep. Um, my right back, uh, again, you know, there's a few people that I could have made a case for. Um, I probably could have even made a case for the current incumbent, Vladimir Soufal, because five million, yeah. wow. But I, I think it would probably be wrong because it's like how many games he played for us, like 20, yeah. 30, whatever. So I, I think probably he needs to do it for a couple more seasons before I maybe rethink the right back yeah. spot yeah but he's he's got to be in the conversation if he carries on the way he is but Definitely. i mean there's lucas neil that i could maybe make a case for i thought he was mm. maybe when he came to us probably not quite at his prime he was probably just on the way down if we're being honest possibly yeah but yeah. i think from everything that i've heard about his captaincy ability um he was brilliant from yeah. all the stories that i've heard yeah but the guy i'm going to go for um, I mean, he was he was right back for probably eight nine years, I think. Um, Timmy Breaker. Yeah, definitely, Timmy definitely. Breaker. Yeah, Timmy Breaker. Two hundred and ninety six oh. appearances and eight goals. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, he did, Never let him. He said, "I don't do my research." I don't do your research. <laughs> with with Tim Breaker, he's one of those players, right? And 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 I, I I had had this awkward discussion with him as well about this is um, because he was so consistent, people forget about him. You know yeah. what I mean? He and I've said this before about you know and I think when people talk about you know oh, someone said oh who's your hammer of the year or whatever and I went Sue Fowl and they went why Sue Fowl? It's because he plays a seven out of ten every game, occasionally an eight but a seven and actually to be fair oggy's had oggy's been brilliant but then there's been occasions where he's let things he hasn't been as good at some games um sue check i think for a couple of games recently has been a little bit sort of below par than usual and i think yes i think the last last week on the um what's name game the uh sheffield united game he's sort of back back to back to his best and, and deck as well you know the first couple of games this season he wasn't great you know there's there all to wait oh because chelsea yeah. nice because he's just fucking knackered yeah. um where sue felt bosh and people forget that first game that that, that leicester game you know yeah. he literally turned up in a country that he'd, he'd never been to you know it wasn't his country yeah. um didn't only straight him and then play an absolute storm of that game yeah. and if you put him right ring back right back and that's and that he's like the new tim breaker he'll be there he'll be like yeah great and when when the conversation talks about the right back in specific terms it's great but when you talk about the team in general it tends to be he tends to get not what left left out in the wash because i don't think that's right but do you know what i mean it's it's the sue checks and rices because they're the ones who are maybe and and tim's the same i think tim was yeah. the same and another um, one that i i am the nard about um putting there and he's exactly the same type of player yeah steve potts yeah yeah steve yeah because he I, I sort of under nard you know steve played you know right back you know he played yeah. center back you know you know is it him or is it breaker in the end i went for breaker but it was it, it was that much between them um but Definitely. i think that, that tim breaker was um you know he he was an attacking fullback before we knew what an attacking fullback yeah. was do you know what yeah, i mean yeah. you know people go on about trent alexander arnold and andy robertson and kyle walker and it's like tim breaker was an attacking fullback before they were mm. even conceived definitely but unlike trent alexander arnold tim breaker could tackle he could, he could actually be a defender yes. you know and i think that's the trouble now i think now you know when when they're sort of 
people can have a you know that's why i just don't i think arnold's great going forward but i don't think you know and i think that's why you know what's his when moise sort of did the same thing with fredericks when i say fredericks is a great defender he's, he's more attack winding defender mm. um so he, he plays him more on the wing makes yeah. perfect sense and same with trent i think as well but um right we'll put timmy break him uh let's go let's go the other side let's go the left left back i reckon that's gonna be a good one it's easy he's got yeah absolutely got it in one yeah no it's a fella that's got a very what? similar haircut to me actually oh. um and uh his name is julian the terminator dix yeah brilliant player. four-time hammer of the year indeed former captain and just you know everything you know on the pitch that you want from a, a leader from yeah. someone that's you know not going to take a backward step you know he's, he's gonna you know step up to the mark and even if you know you're two nil three nil down you know he wouldn't he wouldn't give up i mean you know he had a few naughty challenges and red cards and this that and the other but you know if ever there was a guy that you wanted i i, I think if i'd have seen more of billy bonds i think they were two very very similar players in there you know their, yeah. their sort of mentality do you know what i mean they're, that they Definitely. would absolutely you know they might know that they're going to be beat but they're going to go down swinging yeah. um you know and, and again julian dix was again another a defender yes he could defend no problem at all but he could get forward he could play yeah. some beautiful you know the media sort of portrayed him as some shaven headed thug yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you know, maybe he didn't help himself sometimes. I get that, but he he was a player. He could play football. He could ping sixty yard crossfield balls from left to right, no problem at all. You know, he could get forward. He could, he, you know, the goal Man City. I think he scored a great goal against. Yeah. He just leathered it. You know, you ain't stopping that. And penalties. I mean. I think most of the goalkeepers were diving out of the way. They just yeah. didn't want to get hit. I mean, yeah. it's just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And uh, yeah, he's got to be the left back. There's, there's no, I, you know, unlike the goalkeeper and the right back, where I, do I go this? Do I go this? <sighs> Julian Dix, bang, done. Straight Next in. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. He was. Yeah, out of flat generation, he was just like, he epitomised West Ham, didn't he? Absolutely epitomised the club. Um, right, okay, so we've got Breaker, we've got McLudo, Breaker, Dixie. Right, central midfield, central defence, who's your first centre-back? Well, the first one um, is someone that I, I don't believe he had his best days at West Ham. Yeah. But he started at West Ham and he went on to have an absolutely stellar career premier leagues european cups i think he had 81 caps for his country yeah um, i was actually there for his england debut which i think was against cameroon if i remember rightly at wembley um and yeah rio ferdinand yeah you know um i never saw bobby Moore play um other than on video footage um but i can see why the comparison was made between rio and bobby totally. Moore because they were both centre backs that could bring the ball out and play football. I think I think I was, I, it might have been yourself that made a comment that when he went to Manchester United that Fergie might have you know reined in a little bit of the the sort of like the yeah. football yeah, 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 talent yeah. and just had him as a pure defender. But when he was first coming through at West Ham it was you know I know there was the sort of like the thing about when he came on as a substitute for his debut, the ball drops to him and he just smacks it into Rose Ed and it's like, yeah, is this yeah. this cultured sort of ball playing, you know, defender that's gonna take the mantle of Bobby Moore, really? Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, he, he, you know, he was he was so such a cultured defender, always seemed to have, you know, the, the time to do what he wanted to do he made some errors i'm not going to say that he didn't he was a kid you know when he was coming through yeah but course. um yeah magnificent player in my opinion i i think that you know if, if we could have kept a lot of those kids back then i mean who knows who yeah. knows what we might have done but you know sliding doors moment isn't it leads turned it up is. with 18 million quid and you know we had to pay for a new stand so exactly and then they flipped him and and doubled them all and doubled their money in it 
there you go. That's the trouble. But no, I, I, I agree. I agree. I just think he was um and actually the other yesterday Jake Humphreys did a Instagram post of him dancing to my music. So that was great. So that was great. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, woohoo, thanks. Um there you go. yeah, praise. there you go. That, that that's 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 some praise. But um yeah, no, he was he was just brilliant, wasn't he? He was just and he and obviously we've interviewed loads of players around that time. And, you know, when I said, you know, when he came on, when these play, young players, you know, did you know they were going to be good? And he went, yeah, they, these guys just come on, they're class. Just absolutely, it just looked class. So this is time in the ball and, and and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, Rio sort of epitomised that sort of generation, really, wasn't he? He was, sort of, he was the first one, wasn't he? Rio was yeah. the first one. And then I remember seeing was, the FA Youth Cup final, second yeah. leg, I think it was, or it might have been the first, I don't know, in 96 at Upton Park and, you know, I remember sort of like watching it. And if I remember rightly, I was watching before they really started their careers, Rio Ferdinand, Frank Lampard yeah. Jr. and Michael Owen. And I think Jamie Carragher might have been involved. And normally you sort of like you watch an FA Youth Cup final. You'd be very lucky if maybe one player from yeah, yeah, yeah. all of the players on the pitch makes it. Maybe two if you're lucky. Mm. You know, but there was four. You know, yeah, and, and I think David Thompson was another one, but obviously he didn't quite have the career that those guys had, but he still played at a good level. Yeah. But yeah. Rio was pff, something else. He Brilliant, really was. It? And uh, like I say, we didn't see the best of him. But that doesn't mean to say that I can't put the guy in my 11 because. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah was I'm saying, I was the same. I was saying, um, who, who's going to partner in that central defence? Now, this was a this was a tricky one because I did see Alvin Martin play again. Um, probably I didn't see the best of him. Um, again, I was probably sort of, you know, he was towards the end of his career then. Yeah. Steve Potts could have gone in there quite easily. Um, do you know what? And, and I remember seeing your one. I think you picked Ian Pierce, and I loved Piercey. Absolutely mm. loved Ian Pierce. I thought he was brilliant. Um, but the problem I had is that the guy that I'm going to put next to Rio. I'm putting him there because you'll find out with my midfield, I had a little bit of a conundrum. So I've had to do a little bit of a shift around. Yeah. So his defensive partner, forgive me, is Declan Rice. <sighs> Shots fired. Yeah. Sorry. I had, to, I listen, I had to put Declan in. Yeah. Uh, Cause I think the kid can be whatever he wants to be in football. Yeah. Um, barring, you know, God forbid, touch wood, it doesn't happen, any sort of injuries or, you know, anything like that. He could literally yeah. be anything he wants to be. You know, he can play at centre-back. He can play in midfield. I think the only thing, if he's playing in midfield, that probably is missing from his game to make him an elite-level midfielder, in my opinion, is goals. That's the one thing that's missing from his game. Other than that, he's got absolutely mm. everything that you need to succeed. And he's only what twenty two, and he's got it's mental in it. One hundred and fifty appearances. Yeah, so ridiculous. You know, Absolutely I mental. Mean, yeah. So, uh, like I say, I know he's not playing in midfield at the minute, um, but when we come to the midfield, you'll probably understand why I had to make a bit of a choice. So, yeah, I, I had to have Declan in, so I put him in at centre back. Yeah, fuck it. I've had Bob. We've had, I think uh, we had one playing fucking uh, Bobby Moore in goal. Because it's like nothing's gonna get past him, so we put him in goal. So that's not fair enough. So well, he, he did play in goal, didn't he? he the did. um, yeah, yeah. two, and he saved a penalty. He did. He did save a penalty. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. So there's a back four. There's your goalkeeper. Let's go to midfield. Um, left, left midfield. Well, I the, see now this team that I've picked. I think that this, if if you wanted it to go default four four two, it could do it. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to go the modern formation, four two three one, it do four four two. This, this it, could yeah. do it. So you know, whatever. If you want to do four four two, we'll do four four we'll two. Do so do you want to go to two central, or do you want to? Go no, we we'll go with the left. Players? Go the left, left wing, left wing. Right now, again, this could be controversial. It might not be. There's going to be some people when I say this guy's name, they're going to go, "What are you doing?" Um, but I have to separate. And you probably know who I'm going to say now. Yeah, I have to separate what he did on the pitch, the the joy that he brought for all but the last week or so of his time with the club. Yeah. 
um i have to put that in a box stick that to one side and focus on what this guy did on the pitch which was just <sighs> yeah yeah i mean if, if he'd have been at the club two three four seasons i think i'd have probably revised who i believe is the greatest player i've ever seen claret and blue yeah um but um i've gone dimitri payet yeah definitely and and actually it's funny enough gates everyone literally i mean he's probably one of the most picked players unsurprisingly and everyone i think like 40 percent of people have picked him or something ridiculous like that and everyone has preferenced it that you're gonna hate me but yeah. i'm gonna put the video you right but the man was the man was was argued well he was technically the best player i've ever seen at west ham ridiculous absolutely ridiculous so like ability. why why wouldn't you put him there you know he's like yeah he fucks us about but i'm not even funny yeah. you know he, he was he's those mercurial players do fuck you about a little bit just because the way they're wired yeah. so yeah you I mean, know there's many um, many players there i mean look at george best i mean i'm going way back yeah yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Not someone that we ever had in our ranks but you know you, you look at george best and it's like similar sort of thing in that you yeah. know had an absolute bucket load of talent well it's, it's most like, other it's players like can't reach that level but yeah, at the moment we've, at the moment obviously you know Ravel morrison you know he's 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 thinking that him and rio's interview yesterday um that came out you know uh, you know he was everyone i've interviewed who who he was playing with at west ham said you know arguably world-class world-class player he had all the ability but, but he just didn't have it up there so yeah. You know, and 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 clearly the the guy clearly regrets everything he's done because he's sort of yeah you know, what what could have been, but yeah, Pyatt. I mean, you know, and, and again, we had him when he was in his prime. You know, to give it a FIFA term, he, he was he was in a, his prime and the eighteen month period. I mean, he's still playing all right at Marseille, but not to the level that he was playing at, at no, Upton no. Park. And to be fair, let's let's have it right. Who had heard of Dimitri Pyatt? Yeah, no one. The world until yeah. he turned up at Upton Park no we made in that season yeah. um you know now you know you say Dimitri Payet and most people will say wasn't he the guy to play for West Ham you don't yeah. really sort of like get and say oh doesn't he sort of like play for Marseille it's like yeah. you know really who cares it's a farmer's league let's have it right so totally and also I mean the guy was magic absolutely magic. Was. I mean the free kicks I mean you know everybody says about the one that he got at Old Trafford and that was great but I think mm. was it's six days later against palace i think yeah. that one was even better because if you look that at it better. the wall there's about seven players in it i'm like at i've least, never, seen, yeah. never seen a wall with seven players you're mm. having a laugh and he still managed to bend it around the wall get it up get it down top bins and you're like yeah. wayne hennessy was just sitting there going oh that's nice well he's completely thought he'd gone isn't he he'd, he'd gone and then that's the thing he was just like he was uh you know there's there's not going to be many opportunities in our life where we'll get someone that's or a ballon d'or nominee um playing for your team not not a former ballon d'or nominee but what he actually was is you know in the season that he's playing yeah. for you he's nominated as one of the yeah. best players in the world yeah never nice. happened never yeah. happened and like i say I, you know and the other goal that i remember him getting was in in the second season the goal against middlesbrough yeah um, at london stadium where he picks it up round about halfway on the left wing and I know people sort of turn around and say, Man, it was Middlesbrough, Rob. They did get relegated. They weren't all that. He went past about six players, including oh, the goalkeeper. Yeah. You know, he sat the goalkeeper down on his ass and made him yeah. look stupid, you know. And this was a player that by that stage probably wasn't very happy and didn't want to be in London. And yet he put a goal in like that. Great player. But like yeah. I say, that last week or so when he went on strike, I have to, like I say, I have to put that yeah. in the box. Because if I, if I, sort of included that in my decision making you wouldn't be anywhere near the no team. of course it won't and it's a shame because obviously he gave us there's no shadow of a doubt that that last season the bowling would have been half as good as it was if it wasn't for him yeah, because 100%. he he was you know there's obviously if it was oh you know is this team better than that that team this season you know he he was the one when he wasn't playing then you know, we were a bit toothless to be honest we yeah. you know it was all about Pyatt. He dragged the other 10 players along with yeah. him. You yeah. Know? And I don't think it's any coincidence. Um, again, this is my opinion. Other people will watch this and go, really? But, you know, there was other players in that team that had seasons, you know, where they excelled their levels yeah. as well. And they've never hit those heights since. Yeah, and yeah. As I say, I think he brought out the best in them. And, yeah, it was it was a brilliant, brilliant time to watch him. 
I'm so, you know, so sad it's, it turned out the way it did because I really yeah. do think he could have been an, I mean, he's, he's probably, he, he, blow, he blew his chance of becoming a legend at this club, despite the fact I've put him in my team and 40% of the people have. But yeah. just because of that, he, I don't think you can categorise him as a legend. But I think you can categorise him as a, as a great player. Yeah. And for me, they're slightly different things. They are. But, they are. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally agree. Left. Totally left. agree. Right. We'll put Dimmy on the left. Let's go for the other wing. Let's go for the right wing. Who are we going to have on the right wing then, Rob? This this was easy. Um, because unless I'm very much mistaken, um, this guy did something that until Jesse Lingard did it against um, Villa hadn't yeah. been done before. No. He's got two goals on his debut. Um, he came from QPR. Um, and we got, you know, what, four or five fantastic years out of this guy definitely um he could play on the wing he could play up front in fact i think that was where he, he made his debut if he started I'm up front yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm pretty sure he, he was played a striker um yeah. and got two goals against everton was it yeah and tricky trev yeah tricky trev what a good player he was you know and it was just like what well, i mean you know i have i have a special special bond with trevor sinclair because you know, my uh, my granddad, God rest his soul, he was very <laughs> – I don't know, actually, to be honest, I don't know how we ended up getting to West Ham every Saturday without, like, dying because, like, his eyesight was going and he just drove this bloody Vauxhall Cavalier and he was like, oh, God, it was everyone else's fault. You know, when he's like – he gets to that age where you're a driver, oh, bloody Charlie's <laughs> on the road. Charlie's – that was an awkward fucking Charlie. And his eyesight was going. <laughs> and we'd gone to West Ham. You know, we had, like, front row – we had, like, front row, bang in the middle of the centenary upper. So really good seats we've had for many years. And he still had the programme next to him because he couldn't remember – I mean, I mean, he was a very intelligent man, but, you know, he still had the programme. And anything that was done good by a West Ham – a black West Ham player was Trevor Sinclair. <laughs> no, oh, it's bloody good. Only bloody play on the pitch. Well, it's because he's that's, that's, that's fucking Jermaine Defoe, Grando. It doesn't matter, you know. That's Shaq Shaq his lot, for God's yeah, sake. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, God, that's Chris Powell. But, um, and, and, and that's the thing, you know what I mean? And it was like he was on his play and he was just brilliant, weren't he, Trev? And he was just like, you know, he'd give his all. Uh, he was skillful, you know, a bit like Antonio was for a while. You know, he played, he said, like, heart. He played wing back, I think, he played right yeah. wing, played up front. Um, and was part of that, you know, the, the, the 99 season where he finished fifth, um, which was our yeah. second, you know, best league position ever. And then uh, he, he had fight. the World Cup in 2002. People forget exactly. that. He was on the yeah. standby list. He wasn't going. And then I think it was Danny Murphy got an injury. He got there was loads, wasn't there? I think, yeah. And he I think was Owen brilliant. As well. Yeah, he was, exactly. And, and, you know, that was that was a real testimony to him that he, he he played so well. He got back into that. And I know that, he, you know, obviously we've had him on the channel a couple of times, actually he's a top guy and he is, you know, he always talks really high. I mean, he loves West Ham. He loves West Ham fans. There's no denying that fact. Um, you know, from a personal note, you know, when we sort of, you know, converse, he, you know how much he loves the club and, um, and he was, a he was, he was, a he was that in that sort of, that, that was the last, I'll say sort of era where, Football was fun. Do you know if it was like football was actually fun that era? You had like him and Razor and Ian Wright and Monks and B and all these little players characters. and characters. Yeah, there's real yeah. characters in the game. And uh, yeah, and I, I think it was the, the end of the end of the um, Red Nap era. That's when it sort of went a bit serious, in my opinion. Yeah, in my I opinion. think you're right. But I think it's football in general. I know it's just West Ham football in general, my, in my thoughts. But yeah, tricky Trev. Love him, love him, love him, love him. Uh, friend of the channel, so that's good. And we'll get we'll get a like because we picked because you picked him now, so that's good. Um, <laughs> right, so because he, he always like he, he loves liking when he's on when he's been picked. Um, right, okay, let's. Trev, let's if you go are and... watching this, mate, come on, come on to mine as well. Yeah. Good oh yeah. Little, you know, look after me. Yeah. Look after you. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think he's. A, I, I think Trev must have been picked about forty percent as well. You know, it's like there's there's certain players who distinct. You know. It, across several generations and sinks is definitely one of them as well right let's go into midfield um first central midfielder then um this is a guy that i think through his career again i think in my opinion operated under the radar um, yep. for, for a lot of people um i still to this day 
do not know how this fella got, I think it's 30 England caps. And I've realised that there was a lot of talent around the time, of, you know, Lampard yep. Jr. Yeah. Um, and uh, Gerard and Scholes. I get, I get that, but 30 yeah. caps. Um, the guy it's was ridiculously talented. You know, he yeah. could, his range of passing, you know, he, he was, you know, a magnificent player. And again, player we never saw um, hit his peak at, at Upton Park. No. But I've got to go Michael Carrick. Yeah. I mean, he's, he was one of those players, wasn't he, where I saw, I pay reference to him when we get, when he's picked. He's one of those guys who, wherever he's gone to, the team he's left has never, it's, it's left a gap. And he's, he's yeah. a little bit similar to the Trim Tim Breakerisms, I think, yeah. in that he's just, he does all the donkey work. You know, he, he he's, 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 he's always a seven out of 10, an eight out, of, you know, he's always there. And um, he, Sometimes I think gets left in the wash a little bit, as you said, with all the guys like with, with the Joe Coles and and Don't Know How Junior and people like that. Um, Wash your mouth out, Russ. Yeah, I know. I've got I've got I bought some more Listerine today, so it's all right. <laughs> um, so, but you know what I mean. I think Michael. And he, yeah, he left us. We never replaced him. He left Tottenham. Never replaced. Him, never replaced him. He left Man United. Never replaced him. You know, and and you're thinking it's almost like you know when you've got like. I don't know when you it's when you got like a, a table a coffee table and you have it in the same place all the time and you always put your drink on it and it you move and you move it or it, you know and you what yeah what, what's what's going on what's going yeah. on and, it, and <laughs> it's, that's how i feel about michael carrick he's like why is why is why they what oh i know because we had a guy who was absolutely a fantastic player and an absolute demon of a passer yeah. and and unlike a lot of the other people he 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 hung about you know, he went down and he hung yes. about. Yes, um, unlike some where yeah, unlike, he got relegated yeah. and he, he said, I'll give you the year. And yep. he, he did. And was I was there that day as well in 04. I had three years in Cardiff. Yeah. Um, I was there in 04. We didn't turn up against Palace. We absolutely nah. stunk the joint out. Yeah. And it's, it's such a shame that that's the last memory I've got of a guy that I consider to be a fantastic player yeah. um, in a claret and blue shirt. But mm. it is what it is. It is what it um, is, yeah. It doesn't stop him getting in my Amazon. No, definitely, definitely. Right, so put Mickey Carrick in. Who's um, he going to partner in that central midfield position? And this is why Declan Rice is the centre-back, because this guy has to go in. Jonathan. Has Trump, to yeah. go in. Jonathan's... Got it in one. I didn't realise that. I didn't, realize I didn't put Michael <laughs> Carrick on the screen. Sorry. Roberto in goal. Yeah, you know, it's all in. All the greats. It's all, all in. Greats. All the greats. No, um, you know... Was it 518 appearances? He's been captain. He's, mm. you know, an absolute West Ham legend. And I hope to God the club gives him another year's contract because I really have a problem that if this is his last season, yeah. he's going to finish his career. And we cannot say goodbye, thank you, and all lifting the rest. The, lifting the so Premier Mr. League West title. Ham. Mark Noble. Mark Noble. Yeah. Mark Noble. Yeah. I, I, he's I got to be in there. And he's the reason, like I say, I, I sort of flip flopped. I was like, you know, you know, Declan, Mark. I'll put Declan in at centre back and Mark can go in midfield. Done. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I just think he's, uh, and, and it's something unusual that it doesn't happen. I, I don't think people pay reference to it as much, but. There's not a lot of players in the Premier League who are playing for the club they support. Do you know what I mean? They don't, you know, it's like Mark Noble. He plays for the club he supports. He's a captain of the club. He's a club captain of the club he supports. He's a, you know, one man, five hundred appearances, all this stuff. There's something special about that. And I think we know he's a great captain. He's all this, but the fact is, he's a West Ham fan, and you know, and I've I've watched games that he hasn't been in the squad, and he's been like one of the auxiliary squad. And I've watched almost. I should have done like you know, when you used to have player cam, stands, didn't you? Yeah, and I, and, and I watched it because well, he's on his own. Because there's no well, there's no fucker there anyway. So I literally watched him for the whole almost the whole that Chelsea game last season. Um, when he wasn't in the squad, and he watched that game like a fan, and it's sort of like. You know, I, I I knew he was a fan, but actually watching him watch the game as a fan, he sort of said, "You know, fuck this guy is, yeah. this guy is, yeah, 
he, he does what he, he does what he says on the tin, so to speak. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's no doubt he'll be given. You know, in my opinion, that he'll be given a, a, a some sort of you know deal to see him through to the next season because yeah, I it's so. uh, yeah. I, I mean, so. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, think his comments it, the other day did concern me, where he was saying he doesn't know how long he's got. Well, blah, blah. yeah, and I'm I like, think, please, yeah. just just one more year, and even if even if you can only make one substitute appearance in the league, where you come on in the last five minutes of a game, and we can give you a standing ovation. Yeah, you cannot cannot retire, and we you know we're not able to say thank you. Um, mm. Although I do think he is a little bit maligned by some fans, um, mm. and I use that in the loosest sense, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, all right, you know, is he the greatest midfielder in the world? No. Is he the most yeah. skillful? No. Is he the quickest? No. But you know what? He's one of us. You know, he yeah. is a West Ham fan. He's he's you. That's he's true. Me, yeah. And he's out there, and you know, and he's never, you know, I don't think he ever gets really the credit he deserves and um, you know, no. again when i said earlier about Payet and he dragged people yeah. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. a higher level and mark was was one he had an absolutely amazing season that season and yeah, yeah again you know we went england went to the euros and he didn't get anywhere near it and you think it's like you know at no point he's even had a call up let alone you know anything else he'd never had a call up and yet he was england's under 21s <laughs> captain yeah, and he was, I think, for a spell, he was actually their record goal scorer, if I'm not very much mistaken. Quite possibly. Um, so how he never even got, I say, not even a call up. Yeah, I mean, for God's sake, you know, it's but it's yeah, but that's indicative of West Ham. But Billy Bond's never got a call up, you know, Julian no, Dick's never played for West yeah. Ham, and you know, it's it's not again, it's it's not just indicative of modern football. I mean, although nowadays it does seem like you give them out like, like you know, like bloody happy meal toys at the moment england caps and you're thinking yeah at the end of the day yeah i mean well, you, it's, they're it's talking about late. giving giving an england cap to an argentinian goalkeeper now yeah well that's what i mean it's just Don't get it's, me started it's ridiculous but for me i mean i i just think he's 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 just brilliant and he'll be one of those people who who just tied to the club for the rest you know but very similar to like potsy and people like that he'll be tied to the club kevin Keane, yeah they, they'll always be around the club uh, in some capacity who knows you know ten, i mean you know the way i see scott parker at fulham you know i could easily see mark noble doing the same thing at west ham you know just um but then again you know would he you know i saw someone the other day and it's like we know when when fate when sort of you know legends and he is a, he is a legend he's a modern day legend, yeah, we used, legend. We don't, you know, okay. and so when he you know if he became a manager and say so didn't work out then he may tarnish yeah. you know that's why yeah. brooklyn obviously never went full time you know exactly yeah he was um, very very clever there i think yeah I'm, I'm not being funny when i say that um you know it, definitely how many people have been legends at their club become a manager it doesn't work out oh yeah and then it's the, the relationship's not quite got the same dynamic yeah you know what i mean so yeah, totally um I, I one thing i think that he could possibly do and i, I i'm fairly sure i've read that he's possibly interested in is if ever the role of director of football comes up now i think he could do that brilliantly yeah he could do you know he knows the club inside out and he could be mm. that buffer between the manager yeah. and the the board but as as i said as you said you know i think the the role he's playing now he could easily play it for another season no problem 15 mm. 20 minute man yeah. cup game and plays the cup game and the thing yeah. is I'll, I'll tell you something you know there was what was the game? Fulham. It was the Fulham yeah. game, the nil-nil at Craven Cottage. Yeah. I'm sitting at home watching it, and Duke was sending me WhatsApp messages and this, that, and the other. Yeah. And he actually was like, why are the we brought on Mark Noble? And I turned around and said, because Mark Noble will not give the ball away cheap, which is exactly yeah. what we're doing right now. You know, and everybody, there's this fallacy about Mark Noble where he only passes it sideways, he only passes it back. I've seen him play plenty of through balls, yeah. you know, long passes, not a long ball. There's a difference. Long passes to feet. You know, I've seen him spray balls around left, right and centre, you know, yeah. very rarely waste the ball. But I mean, the fact is, if, you, if, you, if you've got the ball, if you're in central midfield, you look up, nothing's on. What are you going to do? Just lump it? No, you're going to sort of like, OK, I'm mm. going to retain possession. I'm going to recycle it. I'm going to drop back, whatever. Wait for them to come out. And then we'll we'll go again when yeah, when the opportunity course. presents itself, you know. And 
players like Xavi and Iniesta, you know, in Barcelona, yeah. they they made a career out of it. And I'm I'm not saying that you know he was on the same skill level. I, I get that, but stylistically, that was exactly what they did. Yeah. And everybody lauds yeah. them as as sort of like great players, which they were. Mark Noble do, does the same thing, and oh, it's just Mark no, Noble, it's, it's it? true. It, it, but again, it's all perspective, isn't it? It's like. It's like I, I mean, someone said to me, I was talking to a, a, a non West Ham fan. I do have some friends who are non West Ham fans. Ooh. And um, I know, I know. I leave him arm, arms notice, though. Arms just, just, well, it's two meters. Whatever it's two meters now, it doesn't matter. Um, and he was talking about Declan Rice. He's like, oh, I don't, I don't get what you guys mean about Declan Rice. I just don't see it. And it's like, well, it's all about perspective. You know, it's like we, we see him 90 minutes. So we see him the whole game. We don't see him for match the day highlights. So we know what he does during yeah. the game. In the same way that I don't, I don't see the whole thing with Jack Grealish. I don't see it. But then I don't watch ninety minutes of Villa, you know, and I don't watch and and so I just see like you know the the bad bits and so and it's the same with Mark Noble. I think people go, oh, you're, but actually you're right. If he was, if he was, you know, I know Spanish and playing playing for in the same like Xavi or someone like in Barcelona, yeah. then it's all it's all how things are painted in terms of their their exactly. perception and i think mark noble's on those players i totally agree with you i think he's you know some i know there's people who are like oh mark no but you know we as a west ham fan all we want is someone to put a shirt put a shirt on and fight for the shirt and and and, and yeah. you know give a hundred percent yeah buys buys that, into the, the 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 ethos that the name yep. on the front of the shirt is always yep. more important and the name on the back, and that's, and that's the, way, the way it should be. And that's him because he ain't. I mean, he ain't kicked up a fuss when he gets dropped. Nope. You know, he knows. I mean, you know, I, and the, the fact that that Mister Rice, the, the second Mark Noble comes on the pitch, he will almost a detriment of the team. Actually, will we'll give his, will give the hat. The you know, the, the game's still going. He's trying to put his put the fucking armband on him. You know, that You'd shows think how they much could respect. Just sort of go and get another armband, and you know, sort of Mark walks on with it on his oh, arm and just shoves it down his, sock, in his pocket. You know, job it's done. His pocket. Yeah, yeah, but it's like it's he, that just shows how much respect he has for Mark Noble. It and and. You know, and and Mark doesn't, and sometimes Mark doesn't even want the arm. He's like, let's yeah. play the game, yeah. you know. But you know what yeah. I mean. So, um, but yeah, we'll put Mark in. All right, okay. Up from up from first striker, who we have him? Well, for me, uh, there's probably only two guys that I can think of in a claret and blue shirt that have been in my time just yeah. pure out and out goal scorers. Yeah, one of them's Jermaine Defoe. Yeah. Um. But it ain't him. So yeah. you 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 know who it is. He had two spells at the club. Yeah. He was part of one of the boys of eighty six. Simone's up. Yeah. That's yeah. the man. That's the man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Anthony Richard Cotty. T C. The man. Let me write that down. T C. Yeah. Just, I mean, just a pure, pure you, goal scorer. You don't get goal scorers like that anymore. Do you? you know, the the modern, and I always say this, whether it's Cotty or, or you know, the 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 less informed in terms of Jermaine Defoe and stuff. You, know, you don't get these sort of fox in the boxes strikers anymore. It's a part of the modern game which is gone, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. They're all forwards, aren't they? Like even yeah. Vardy. He, I mean, the last one was probably something like Danny Ings. And even he's become a bit more of a forward now rather than a striker. Yeah, um, yeah he was just a, just a natural ability to score goals, wasn't he, old TC? Yeah. He could just sniff out the opportunities, just yeah. you know, see see ball, hit ball, see yeah. goal, score goal, bang, done. Mm. You know, Simple. And yeah. uh yeah, I mean, like I say the, the only two pure like talking just talking pure goal scorers yeah that's like it's him and him and jermaine defoe yeah um oh but yeah but the only two apologize now you know he's the oh, he, okay. he oh, yeah. so, sorry yeah. jermaine if you watch i know you what you mate. mean sorry i know what you mean i know what you mean it's true <laughs> old, very, old wounds, very mate. they were very similar I, and I always thought when me uh, Chicharito that he was going to be the next one. Do you know what I mean? Because he was sort of in, in the same ilk, but he was never. I don't think he was used right because he, he always nah. seemed to be shoved out onto the left, and it was yeah. like again, he's a he's a poacher. What yeah, are you doing slinging him on the left all the time. It's ridiculous. Mm. You've spent all his money. You've given him 150 grand a week, whatever it was, oh, yeah. to stick him on the left yeah. square peg round hole. But we do it all the time. We but um, no, 
Cotty was just, like I say, he was absolutely lethal. You know, yeah. anything around the penalty box, you know, defense, the opposition defense, watch out. Mm, definitely. You know, and again, no, another player that I don't think, you know, I mean, even when he was at Everton, I mean, he, he scored plenty of goals for Everton. Yeah. People think that he flopped at Everton. Look at his record. Yeah. No, he did. I mean, he scored, he scored goals wherever he went. He left and two goals. Here's a little thing for you. He's actually got a place in football history. And what he did, as things stand at the minute, unless rules change, no one will ever do again. No, what did he do? no he can't. Yeah. What did he do? He played in all four divisions of the Eng English Pyramid Premier League, Championship, League One, League Two, as it is now. Did that in one season. Did he score as well? He scored. No, he, it, no. He, uh, no, I don't think he did because the last club he played for was Millwall. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. He, he, was at, he was at Leicester. He was at Norwich. He was at Barnet, where I believe he was player manager. Yep. And he finished at Millwall. And that's where I, I'm pretty sure that's where he, he sort of said, Nah, this is ridiculous. And, you know, that was that was him. Done. Well, I think everyone but thinks no it's ridiculous when it's out at Millwall, to be honest, with Gatesy. Yeah. To be honest, well, but yeah. But I know what you mean. Yes, that's something. Yeah, you never do that. That never happen again. So yeah, they're not allowed to do that now with the way the rules are. But yeah, he's got yeah. a little little place in in football history for that. And he would know that because he's Mister Statman. Yes, and he knows his stats. I, I think I said exactly how many goals goals he scored. He, he can does. Tell you no problem at yep. all. Yep, he can. And I think I I think I said he had seven caps and he had eight, or he had eight caps and he had seven, or something like that. I, I was like one of them. I, I think up. it was seven. I think he's got. Yeah, seven. I think I, I said he had, he had eight, and it was like no, actually, I was I was in the squad, but I never never came on. Oh, sorry, 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 TC, sorry, mate. I just I just gave him one less England cap. Jesus, tell yeah, me he's up front got, for you. <laughs> you got to be accurate, mate. That's what you got to is, a TC. Yeah. You got to a TC. Right, who's TC going to partner up front then? Well. It's the most talented player that I ever saw in a Claret Blue shirt. Yeah. Um, I was there when he got that goal against Wimbledon. And I remember when Trevor Sinclair's got the ball on the right. Yeah. Put this arcing ball into the, the Wimbledon penalty box. And I'm looking. He's going up. And he just, it, it just, time seemed to freeze just yeah. for that sort of moment. Time just seemed to freeze. And I'm thinking, what, what's he doing? Goes up, does that bicycle kick. And it just flies across Nice. Neil Sullivan, you know, goes past him. And I was I was in the Bobby Moore lower with my, my best mate, Rob. And I was yeah. literally, me and a couple of other lads that were around us, we were like, yay, sort of thing. You yeah. know, it was, there was that sort of split second where you were like, what the hell have I just seen? Yeah. What have I just seen? Um, you know, and... Eh, just a, a fantastic talent. I mean, he had a screw loose. You know, he was he was a yeah. you know a, a character with a capital C. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but Paolo Di Canio. I mean, what a player! And people said about him, oh, he never did it away from Upton Park, uh, Manchester United, Barthez. Yeah, um, he did it plenty the of goals times. he got yeah. the last season against Chelsea. Did anybody? sort of see that yeah all right maybe his best days came up in part but it's not like yeah. he sort of turned up at away games and it was like you know no um, not at all. With 10 men here you know yeah he was he was a fantastic player and uh again i don't think he got any caps for italy i think he got under 21 caps and whatever but no i think there was a i think he didn't, yeah, he didn't did see eye to eye with the Italian. yeah yeah mm -hmm. i think he he well, probably the same thing as dixie you know yeah um you know a little bit of a clash um you know, face don't fit, whatever, and, yeah, and that's yeah. that. But honestly, the I say with with Payet, I think if he'd have carried on, he might have challenged Parlo in that, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just for the for the longevity that he had, and just his, you know, and even in the last season where he, he had injuries and he wasn't quite at the same level, and he still, like I say, scored those two goals at Stamford Bridge that were just like, yeah, wow, and. The last game that I saw him was the, the, the Chelsea game, the last home, home game of the season. Yeah. He got relegated under, well, he was actually under Brooking at the time, obviously, but, you know, Rhoda had his um, yeah, yeah, issues. Yeah. And uh, always remember it. I was, again, see, I had my season ticket in the Bobby Moore lower. Uh, my best right mate, Rob, couldn't go. So yeah. my wife came with me 
and at times she was heavily pregnant with the twins right and where we sat we were sort of like about two three four rows from the front whatever and there was a steward that used to sit in front and he we got to know each other sort of over the years and whatever and he just looked at me and he sort of he saw my my missus is like out there and he turned around and said you do realize if we see this out this place is just gonna go nuts and yeah. i'm like i know and he's like your missus and i'm like i know and he said yeah. tell you what and he he took her and he he sort of put a, the other side of the advertising hoarding so that when the final whistle went yeah. everyone sort of like went nuts she'd be out of the way and whatever nice. um and yeah the final whistle went and it was just absolute pandemonium and i always remember he was sort of coming around and he was in bits absolute yeah. bits because he knew that that was the last time he was going to put on the yeah, carriage yeah. Upton Park, and he was he was just in absolute pieces but i mean that's love, the thing love yeah. him as a player yeah i mean he was he was a phenomenal player but again he was part of that fun era you know it was just entertaining mm. wasn't he you'd go you didn't know what era what what paolo was going to turn up um was it going to be the crazy one was it going to be the mesmerically fantastic yeah. one you know and and, and that's why bradford yeah i mean that, that whole game. That, i mean that whole game epitomized west ham in that era you know things like that happening all the time but for just, all the stars aligned that day wasn't it really in terms yeah. of madness um I remember it. yeah i remember yeah, it was sort of crazy like watching it and it was just and i think bradford were bottom or thereabouts we, like was that, doing, yeah. we was doing all right in, in the league so yeah you kind of turn up and think three points easy i think i think we went two nil up uh but i think then Somewhere, shaka yeah. broke his shaka broke his leg yeah and steve and Bywater then we went, came on steve Bywater come on and he was like a cat on hot bricks you know he couldn't yeah. catch a cold he really couldn't that day um and uh we were four two down and i remember parlo getting chopped no penalty yeah chopped no penalty in the third one chopped and he's just like bollocks to this and he's you know yeah take me off boss you know yeah it ain't happening today and harry's on the side Come on, come on, we're losing. Come on, yeah, you know, and crowd, Paolo Di Canio, and all the songs. Well, I think that's the thing, it's the song, in it it's, uh, yeah. again. It's like when you, you know, you see, you, you've put, put uh, Piet, you've put obviously Di Canio, you know, they all had the, they both of these songs, and oh, Ludo as well. Ludo, and, yeah, and it's just having like it, it, there's something special, and that I mean, that, it just all worked so well. That's that Di Canio song, it just works, and it was like. It was just synonymous with that time and it was just brilliant it was just an entertainer yeah. yeah he makes you smile when you think about power of you smile and you know we should there's no way we should have got him if you know he had to, he had to push over a ref for us to get him <laughs> um and 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 to be honest i mean thinking it and i was i was talking to someone about it the other day you know he was doing all right at sheffield sheffield wednesday not yeah, yeah. not like ripping up the trees. trees no him but... and carbone were doing all right but he came to west ham and you know in that sort of period he was there four or five I mean, years four or five wherever he was um he became you know a premier league great not just a west ham great a premier you know he was he's mentioned in the same ilk as a bird camp or a, a, or, or zola you know di canio they're part of the same group and yeah. that would have never 100%. happened if he was at, wasn't at west ham and i think yeah. he knows that do you know what i mean that's why he still has this affection with west ham yeah. because he knows we, we we basically made it a bit like well pyatt you know as you said no one knew what part who pyatt was till he came to west ham and then everyone knows him as the free kick bloke yeah. um yeah but i mean he's, he's, you know and another thing that people forget you know because everybody sort of like focuses on the negatives and you know that's just you know the way yeah. life is people focus on the negatives and oh he's the bloke that pushed over the ref well yeah he is but you might also remember didn't he get like a fifa fair play award for he did paul gerard yeah. did his knee in at everton the ball's yeah. crossed in he he had an open goal win the game 2-1 yeah. and he's just gone thank you very much he did he certainly did you know, and, uh, yeah i don't and, think stuart pierce was too happy by all accounts or, or harry but no yeah. no i don't think harry do do? particularly yeah what you do exactly it's just if it was parallel weren't it that's what he did yeah. um that, that was, was parallel he box was office, he, yeah good chat it was a box office he that's was, how he did he was someone that that he even an, a neutral if if you knew that paulo de canio was playing for west ham that day you'd pay money to go and <coughs> totally absolutely totally um and, and that's that's the team 
Ludo in goal, Timmy Breaker, Declan Rice, Rio, Dixie, Sinks, Carrick Noble, Payet, De Canio, Cotter. He has goals in there, Gatesy. There's goals what, there. I, you know, I'm, you know, I think that that team, and it's all hypotheticals because you know they're all different ages and whatever. <laughs> but I think if it were possible to get that eleven together and put that on the pitch, that team would hold its own against pretty much any team you can put in front of it. I agree. I agree. Definitely. But uh, yeah, no, I totally agree. Gates, man, it's been lovely chatting. It's been lovely chatting, my friend. Um, and and as, as I said, anyone who fancy subscribing to the Forged from Iron YouTube channel, have a Google, you know, have, a, have a search and, and listen to Gates and, and, and Duke and various others moaning about West Ham. Um, <laughs> not, no, we're not at the minute. We're, we're, Good. we're, no, we're not. We're not. We're exactly. Watch it now when it's all happy. Um, and we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, will, for the rest of the season, it will stay happy. But anyway, um, anyway, hope everyone is safe and well. And obviously, from myself and from Gatesy, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jabs. Uh, come on, you irons. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Much love. Bye-bye.